Well, praise the Lord. Shabbat shalom. Let's give the Lord a big shout in the house tonight. Oh, come on. Let's give him a great big shout. <laughs> we have a special treat in the house tonight. We have all of the Impact Center from Lawton, Oklahoma with us tonight with Ray and Rochelle Garcia. And uh, I got to tell you, Ray, every time I say your name, I'll just give a little a story. Uh, I was raised in Los Angeles, and my dad was a uh, boxer, Golden Glove boxer in the Marines. So he always liked to take us to um, uh, the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles. And uh, when I was little, and uh, they had a guy who was the announcer that wore the tuxedo. He was Jimmy Lennon, if you remember. And his son now does it. So, but every time I say your name, <laughs> I hear Jimmy Lennon. So. Just to be able to bless you, I will do my Jimmy Lennon uh, introducing the Impact Center, okay? Would that be all right with you? All right, so you hear the bell, ding, ding, ding. Okay, now the mic comes down. Welcome, fight fans, to the spiritual warfare that only First Nations can bring from Lawton, Oklahoma. Ray and Rochelle Garcia. All right. <laughs> so get ready for the victory tonight. And we also have Apostle and Dr. Chuck Pierce is in the house. No, <coughs> no introduction. And the Jimmy Lennon doesn't go with the name Chuck Pierce, so we'll avoid that. But tonight, we're going to have a powerful time, and I'm excited that you're here. Let's welcome all of our online audience, all of you in the house. Come on, give them a shout. So tonight, let's have all the shofars, if you would come down, and I think this is going to be a very serious shofar blast. I asked and text some of you to bring your shofars. Hallelujah. God is good. Let's get a few in the middle here. Yep, come on over here. Aaron, Crystal. Yeah, come on down, please. Thank you. Before we do the show far as I, I want to introduce you to the latest member of House of David, the One New Man Embassy. Do we have a picture? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So let's welcome. It's interesting after the service that we had the other night on Friday night, and then Gideon came, kind of a prophetic. But this is Gideon Thomas Apsher, and he is home now, and he is healthy and safe, and we're just so excited uh, for Dusty and Thomas. And uh, in fact, let's just give a special blessing for him first. Father God, we, we give this shofar blast for Gideon. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're releasing warring angels from the throne room of God all around him, not just for tonight, but Lord, for all the days of his precious life, that he will be that mighty warrior. And so we just bless him and welcome him here into the kingdom of God in Yeshua's name. Let's give a great big shout. Hallelujah. We have a lot of guests in the house. If you'd go ahead and put up the numbers scripture. One of the things the Lord showed us a lot of years ago, we've been having meetings on Shabbat and blowing the shofar for over 20 years. And uh, it's the revelation of this scripture. And if you would say it with me, please. When you go to war in your land against the enemy that attacks you, then sound an alarm with trumpets so that you may be remembered before the Lord your God 
and you shall be saved from your enemies. Amen. Let's give the Lord a shout. The Lord gave us the revelation many years ago that Psalm 122.6 was not a request but a command. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So we're going to do that tonight. And I want to encourage you to particularly pray over the next 48 hours. Israel's in a very perilous time. This week, Kurt Landry Ministry partners and donors we made a commitment, a very large commitment to release this week 14 generators to special portable military uh, medical teams. And because of the threat uh, against the power source, uh, these medical teams will need electricity and will need power. So you provided 14. They're uh, actually being delivered right now as we speak. But the next 48 hours is, is uh, they're on the highest alert ever. And so with that in mind, if you would please, Father God, Father God. In, Yeshua's mighty name, in Yeshua's mighty name, we prophesy, we prophesy for, the shalom for the shalom of Jerusalem, of Jerusalem and, all of Israel. and all of Israel. And we decree, we decree no, weapon no weapon formed against you, formed against you. shall prosper. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you for, protecting for protecting all of Israel in Yeshua's, name. in Yeshua's name. Let's give a great big shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you would, please. Father God. We lift up the persecuted church, lift up the persecuted church. All, over the world. all over the world. Anoint us, Lord, Anoint us, Lord. As, mighty as mighty warriors during this season of war. Season of war. Let, us fight Let us face the fight with the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. And, fire. and fire in Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Let's give a great big shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word says when you receive the prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. Tonight, we're going to receive a prophetic word. The symbolism of this for me in a service is always to ask the Lord, whatever is known or unknown in my life or in my heart and my mind, will and emotions, whatever Lord is there, I submit to you, I surrender it. I surrender. Go say, I surrender. I surrender. That the wall come down, the wall come down. As, it as it did in Jericho. That I might welcome, that I might welcome the holy seed of the word, the of the word. with the power, the power to transform me, to transform me and, heal me and heal me and empower me, and empower me for my morrow. For my in Yeshua's name. Amen. And if, if this is for you, what I want you to do is I want you to shout. But if you just raise your hands, it's just a sign of surrender. And as you give that shout, may the Lord heal you and set you free from any anxieties. Ready? Let's go. All of you online, join us. Let's give a great big shout. Ready? May the angels of the Lord hearken on to every word that's ever been spoken to you. May every word that lies resting in your heart that may be asleep awaken tonight. For the master has need of a harvest of everything that's ever been spoken. So Lord, we just thank you in advance for an awakening. Say awakening. In Yeshua's name. Wonderful. Let's give all the ministers with the shofar a great big hand clap. Thank you so much. So far as you may be dismissed. And at this time, let's welcome Pastor Tim and Sandy Osball as they come. And how many are ready for Shabbat?
Come on, how many are ready for Shabbat? Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. You can do better than that. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> See, I knew there'd be somebody in there that could do that. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. See, you have to come with an expectation. The Lord has sent us a word tonight. Are you ready to receive the word? Yes. Deep breath and let it go. Deep breath and let it go. Deep breath and let it go. Let's say the blessing first in Hebrew. Baruch Adonai. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam. Asher kitchenu b'mitzvatav. Vizavanu. Ladlek. Ner shel Shabbat. And now in the English. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. So Father, tonight we rejoice. Father, we rejoice. Father, we rejoice. Yes. Because you are in the house. And Father, we come with an anticipation and an expectation, Lord. Father, that you are going to meet the needs of your people. But more importantly, Father, that we have come to worship you and to seek your face tonight, Father, and to lift up the name of the Lord. Father, we pray that every need is met in this house. And Father, we pray that you take joy from what you see, hear, and experience in our lives tonight as we worship you in spirit and in truth. So Lord, we have an expectation and an anticipation of the miracle working power of God in every life. And if you're in agreement, you would say amen and amen. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap. And let's welcome from Lawton, Oklahoma, the Impact Center worship team. Let's welcome them all to the platform. Tell them welcome home. Come on, welcome home. Come on, welcome home. Come on, give it a shout. This is one new man at the deepest level, believe me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. So amen. We just want you to feel the freedom. Because when we begin to sing, we, we, we sing about the land. And when we go to different parts all over the country, we've been to reservations, we've been to the boarding schools. And so we're not worshiping the land, but how many of you know that the land cries out for what has happened? And so sometimes we go up against ancient demonic spirits on the land. But when you begin to decree and you begin to declare, and I love what we just decreed and declared in here over what the enemy has tried to do to our people. And so something that I love that Apostle Chuck always has, has taught us that no matter where we go, there's always First Nations people. And so I want you to begin to, as we decree and declare tonight, what we're gonna sing over you tonight, I want you to begin to rise up as Esther's in this time, in this season, for your people, for your nation. 
come on, because we're breaking out tonight.
Come on, just get your dance on. Come on, we're gonna have a power for Jesus tonight. People love this land. 
Revivals in the land. Oh, revivals in the land. Oh, yes, revivals in the land. In our Kiowa language, we say, Aim all begadok e. And that means come Holy Spirit. That's what we're saying in this land. That's what we're saying in this time. We're speaking the word of the Lord. And we're saying, aim all begadok e. Aim all begadok e. We know the Spirit of God has been poured out over generation over generation. So we're saying, do it again and do it again and do it again. Do it again and do it again. Aim all begadok e. Aim all. Oh yes. Oh yes. Aim all begadok e. Aim all begadok e. Aim all begadok e. Aim all. Aim all.
Like a violent rushing wind Fill this house Fill this house Like a violent rushing wind Like a violent rushing wind Like a violent rushing wind Fill this house Fill this house I don't know I don't know What for Me see I don't know ago um, we were coming back our team was coming back from doing quantum tribal gathering in in um, Alabama and so um, so when we got back home a lot of our team got hit really bad and so um, so me and my middle grandson out there that's sitting out there Josiah we both wound up in the hospital he was metaflighted to Oklahoma Silt children's hospital and um his lungs were filling up with fluid and then um we were supposed to go on a trip with apostle Nigel, and i remember sitting on the bed and i i, I told um my husband i said i, I don't think we're gonna be, i'm not gonna be able to go i i said you go ahead and go i said i'm not feeling well and i don't know what's going on but i'm, I'm just not feeling well and so we let we let a few days go by and uh, all of a sudden I told him I said you know we were getting ready for Sunday service and I told him I said I'm not I'm not well I'm gonna have to go to the hospital and so um, I went up in the hospital for nine days and so I worked for Indian Health Service for 22 years and so I, I went back to be with 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 my people at the hospital there and so while I was in the hospital, just I think a week or two, we were supposed to go to, to Passover with Apostle Chuck. And, and, um, and I told the team, I said, we're just going to have to chalk it up. We're not going to be able to go this year. I'm, I'm, I'm not well at all. And so I began to have a moment. How many of you had a moment? Especially with all this COVID and everything that, that, 
has taken place. And, and so uh, I had a moment, and, I, and, and so that night in the hospital room, now mind you, this was still the time where family members couldn't come in. I was nine days without my family, my husband, my church. I was watching them online. Um, nobody could come visit me. And so I had a moment that night, and I just began to open up my mouth. I began to worship, and all of a sudden I began to hear a song that I would sing years ago. And it began to minister to me. And so I just began to cry out to the Lord, and I said, it's in your hands. That next morning, I get a text from Apostle Chuck. And he began to pray over me, and he began to say, you will, you will be here next week. You will be out of the hospital come Monday. You will be out of the hospital, and you will be with us, and you will do what God wants you to do, and you will sing, and you will do what you have to do better than you've ever done before. And let me tell you, come Monday, I had my walking papers. They wanted to keep me another week, but I had my walking papers, and I said, I'm going to Oklahoma City, and I'm going to get my grandson. And let me tell you, I began to, I think it was like a day or two before we went to, to Passover, and I just began to cry out to the Lord, and the Lord gave me this song. And I began to text Apostle Chuck, and I said, tell me about the Ruach of God, and he began to, he began to pour into me, he began to text me back, and he began to talk about the breath, and see, that's what the enemy wanted to do. He wanted to take our breath away during that time. And so this is the song that God gave me. This is a song that we're going to enter into the Native American Music Awards here in just a few weeks. And because we are God's people and, and He is our God, amen? So I just want you to begin to raise your hands tonight and understand that our God is a God of possibilities. He is your true healing God. And I heard Rabbi say that tonight. And Rabbi prayed over me years ago when, when I thought that I was going to go at a young age. And he began to break that off of me. And I'm still standing here today.
Something that we always do is we like to present gifts, protocol. If I can have Rabbi, if you would come up. Christy, if you would come up, please. These were all made uh, by my daughter and spiritual daughter, and we just want to bless y'all. The Buffalo Nickel has a Kiowa on it, and it also has a Buffalo. So, Silver, we just want to bless y'all. And Apostle Chuck.
So good to be, I told Rabbi, so good to be back home. Amen. Amen. Good to be back home. So, you get the big nickel. (laughs) And this one's made with real... uh, Buffalo bones, glass beads, and sinew. Wow. So real quick, the the history behind this, uh, my great-great-grandfather, he was Chief Big Bo. And so he he did a lot of um, different things with the Mexicans. And so one of the gifts that was given to Chief Big Bo was the coin. And so in our, in our family, we wear 200 dimes on our native dresses and we wear the nickel coin. And on the other side is the Kiowa War Chief. Thank you. Thank and his you. name is Big Tree. So, and I notice you have the tree. So, thank, thank you, you, Rabbi. It's an honor. Well, can we we can give something to both of you. So, if you would, we have something for for you and for Apostle Chuck. So, Arabella and Joseph, would you come? This is our third generation. The scripture says, "When the fig tree is blossoming." So. You, you want to give Mr. Ray the, this is a shofar with the city of Jerusalem and Joseph would you give Apostle Chuck this shofar wow thank you Joseph thank you so much thank you thank you you did good wow thank you Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll tell you what, would you like one? Okay. Bella, would you bring that one right there and give it to this young man? Wow. All right. If I could get a couple of gentlemen to bring the beam up. Let's welcome Apostle Chuck Pierce to House of David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise let's, the Lord. Before you see it, let's thank God for House of David. And for, for Rabbi Landry and Christy and all the family, let's thank God for them. Now, bless someone next to you and say, this is a moment. Wow, you may be seated. For uh, Apostle Nigel, please stand up. We haven't even seen you here. You came in. Thank God. Wow. Jan. Amen, amen, amen. Isn't it awesome? I have a word for here that God spoke to me. But, you know, I was thinking about being here. This is one of, just one of my great honors is to be here. I have wanted to come so many times. I've known Rabbi Kurt and Christy for a long time. And I knew at the right time God would allow me to be here. And why is because I believe one of the things I'm seeing is 
Prophetic words are coming into intersection in the heavens. Words that's been spoken over you, words that have been spoken here, words that have been spoken in Oklahoma. And what that means is certain words are coming into alignment in time. Now, one of the things we have always done is really keep a clear record of prophetic words. And uh, I want to share a couple of things about me and then why it is so important we're here on Shabbat. I think you had just a beautiful presentation of Shabbat. And when we began our worship, I really had an incredible salvation experience when I was 11 years old. I would go to the Baptist church, it was about this size, with my grandmother and uh, it wasn't it wasn't traditional, so I don't know anything about Baptist, so to speak. And during that service, the services, a little old lady named Miss Grimes would stand up and say, start waving her hands while the pastor was speaking or we were singing hymns, and he would stop and he'd say, Miss Grimes, what is the Lord saying to you? And then she'd tell us all. Now, that affected me greatly. I told my grandmother, I said, now, if the God of all these stories can speak to her, I want him to speak to me. And she said, if you would just sit down and shut up for one minute, maybe he could speak to you. And then one day on the second row, the Lord himself came and stood beside me. And they would give that invitation, you know, in Baptist church, they'll give it for hours. And, but my grandmother said, you will have to hear him speak to you before you can get saved. And in other words, I know I wasn't supposed to get saved just because I needed to stay out of hell. And I knew I wasn't supposed to get saved uh, just because I felt like I needed to. She said, you'll have to hear him speak to you to be saved. And one Sunday on the second row, the Lord came and stood next to me and said, this is your day. And I went forward, had an incredible salvation experience. But it wasn't until a lot of trauma. And when I was 18, when I went through some things, I ended up in the hospital, and I was under oxygen, and God put me in the room with a Pentecostal pastor. That's how sovereign I think we need to recognize our moments, Rochelle. And he introduced me to someone I did not know another person of Yeshua, of Jesus, of the Mashiach, the Anointed One, Holy Spirit. And I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And something else happened. He got out of the hospital, I had to stay. And uh, something happened. I thought about this, Rochelle, when you were saying that. In that hospital room, the Lord visited me for three days, overwhelmed me for three days. And he revealed himself to me as the God of Israel. He said, I am the God of Israel. I am the God of covenant. And he told me, I want you to learn covenant. And 
It, it was an amazing, amazing visitation. And really, I didn't have anybody to talk to, you know, back in the early 70s, that you could really ask a lot of questions to. And the Pentecostal pastor had told me, if you'll start reading the Bible every day, read a chapter, in a couple of chapters in the Old Testament, a couple of chapters in the New Testament, your Psalms and your Proverbs, you'll be okay. I started doing it. And when I started reading through Genesis, I saw covenant. But that year, I read, I want to say this, in the next two weeks, I read all the way through. And God, in his grace, showed me the Trinity, showed me the power of first. He spoke to me. While I was in that room, he said, from Proverbs 3, it was on September the 3rd, I can still remember it. He said, if trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, depart from evil. Turn from your wicked ways. And he said, and if you'll give me your first fruits, this, this came alive in me. If you'll give me your first fruits, I will fill your barns. Well, we had lots of land. Our family had gone into disarray. My dad had died a, a very tragic death, and I was responsible for it all. Well, nobody wanted to do that at 18 years old. He said, if you'll give me your first fruits, I'll fill your barns and I'll heal all of the nervous structures in your body. See, it's right there in Proverbs 3 when you study it in Hebrew. I'll heal the fibers And so, when I got out of the hospital, I immediately devoted my life to the Lord and went to the Baptist Student Union State Convention in Dallas, and I heard the Lord say to me, I've called you for the healing of the nations. They were giving a mission call. It was clear. I was in pre-med. I assumed, gosh, I'm going to have to be, spend all this money going to college and all this work and then end up in Ethiopia somewhere. That was really what I said to him on the way down to the altar. <laughs> but when I got to the altar and I knelt down, see, you want to see your moment. Tonight's the moment. To my right side was the most beautiful red-haired girl. I'd seen her on campus, but I didn't know her. And she was down at the altar. She had surrendered also her life to the ministry. And when she stood up and I stood up, you know, my... My heart drifted from the Lord real quickly, and I, <laughs> but I, I knew he had put her there. I asked her out the next week. We went to a truth concert. I asked her out the next night, and I thought, yeah, we can go to Bozier and do all, I don't have to do all those things I used to do. And uh, I pulled up in front of a nightclub, and she said, well, that looks like hell on the outside, so I know Satan's on the inside. <laughs> you got a choice. You can get out here and stay here, pick your car back up at the dorm, or you can take me back. 
I said, well, my grandmother's taught me to be a gentleman. I'll take you back to the dorm. On the way home, the Lord spoke to me and said, marry her. (laughs) See, once you start hearing him, you can't do anything except follow him. And I want you to remember that. And he can lead you into incredible places. I got home, my brother said, my gosh, she is beautiful, but she is such a good girl. Everybody knows that. Do, do you like her? I said, no, not at all. But the Lord told me to marry her. Of course, he said, well, how much did you smoke on the way home? You know. <laughs> And I said, the Lord spoke to me. And we did that. 51 years later. See, when you... When you know your moment, you're at the right place at the right time. And all of a sudden, God can do something so supernatural just for you. I really think that's what tonight's about. I heard him speak to me on the front row when Renee was, uh, when Rochelle was speaking, and he said, I had told David to stay one step ahead of death. Therefore, death could not catch him. And I started thinking about being here tonight. There's something about tonight that's breaking some power in the atmosphere. Now, as I said, God revealed himself to me as the God of Israel. And then in 1978, I started do I didn't understand first fruits, but I started doing it when I was 18 years old. And I knew all I had to do was bring the best I had to the Lord at first fruits. And I had enough understanding to relate that to the new moon. And if I would give him the best of what I had, he'd bless everything else I had. And he could restore all the mess in our family. And it was a mess. A mess. I would have to learn to follow him, watch for the moment, and watch him orchestrate the restoration. Now, I feel like when I finally get to a place that I've wanted to go to so long, that the Lord says, you're in my moment. Now put your hand on somebody and say, I think you're in his moment. Therefore, there's an expectation that arises. You're one step ahead of whatever the enemy was trying to do to stop you next week. See, that's, Pam and I started doing Shabbat in 1978, faithfully. We had two other couples we'd do it with, and... We would do Shabbat, and then we would uh, do art. I'm an artist, and we both are. And we would do art, and then we would pray. And sometimes we'd pray for three hours. And that went on for eight years, nonstop. I cannot remember one Shabbat I missed in 1970, from 1978 for the next eight years. And I watched the Lord restore and restore and restore. 
So tonight, it was as if, I know me personally, I had to press here to do Shabbat. Not do it at our place. Not do it at home. If I would press here, God would do a miracle. And this is what he said to me about House of David. He said, I'm giving House of David the authority over threefold courts. Those things that cannot be easily broken, they're going to have the authority to break. The Lord says, I'm going to show you how to unravel poverty, infirmity, and religion. I'm going to show you how to unravel mammon, corruption, and divination. The Lord said, I will be using you in days ahead in places to unravel what needs to be unraveled. Now, that word is really the word that's used when we find Matthew 16, the Lord saying, I'll give you the keys to the house of, uh, uh, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. Uh, What you bind on earth will be bound. What you loose on earth will be loose. And what that actually means is I'm giving you the power to unravel what needs to be unraveled. So I decree that we are here tonight to gain that anointing. The ability ability to unravel the assignments God gives us, no matter what they are from this day forward, Rabbi, you'll have the supernatural ability to unravel it because we're in the moment tonight. And because you walked in here, the spirit of prophecy is in here. And that means that word is penetrating you. Whatever you need to unravel, Remember, God said tonight you could unravel it. Now, now, see, we're in this incredible time where war is on every front around us. And I began to develop my heart through his covenant for his covenant first land, Israel, starting when I was 18. And then my grandmother and great-grandmother were Chickasaw. And some way or another, my mother operated in some sort of culture because she was a businesswoman, and she gave me to my grandmother grandma and grandmother to raise. Well, they put things in me that were incredible and taught me things that I know my brother and sister never were taught. And I began to align from Genesis all the way to Revelation, the power of the first. First Israel, well, first spirit. The spirit hovered over chaos, and God spoke. First garden, we all have some boundaries somewhere that the Lord wants us to multiply in. First Israel, his chosen land that he watches after. The land that he decided to, and the people that he decided to give Torah to. 
he didn't decide to give Torah to the Americans. He decided to give Torah to the Israelis and the only way other nations can come into the power of Torah is to be grafted into it through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first people of this land. And here tonight, there's that divine intersection going on. First Jew, Gentile, first nations, first Judah. And there's something so divinely in this atmosphere that if you will stop for a moment and ask the Lord the one thing you want him to do, he'll do it. That atmosphere we've walked into tonight, something supernatural. And then... I remember one of the very first words I gave over Oklahoma, the state, that from the east, the glory would come. So there's some divine alignment going on, just as divine as what we saw Monday with the supernatural eclipse. See, we couldn't have seen that new moon without the eclipse. And when you start understanding God and his order and his power, what I saw was he was setting a path all the way across America and saying, today it changes. See, I liked what Rochelle said. We're in this moment of awakening. Yeshua recognized his moments. It's amazing when you read through the word of God. At the Cana, at the wedding his mother took him to, they run out of wine three days in and Mary said, they're out of wine. Well, you had to celebrate seven days. It was representative of the covenant feast, the wedding. And she was telling him, we're out of wine. How are we going to celebrate? And he said, well, what's that got to do with me? And she made this statement. She said, whatever... He tells you to do, do it. Now, when you read that statement, you can't really say if she was saying it to the people of the party or if she was saying it to him because he couldn't do anything unless Father spoke to him. He couldn't change the water into wine. Father would have to say something for him to do it. And all of a sudden, he knew exactly what to do to tear down the religious force that was stopping the celebration, bring those purification pots, fill them up, and he turned the water into wine. They parted three and a half more days. See, There comes a time in our life where we have to understand we're going to press through till the party's over. And we're going to do whatever we need to do to make sure we complete why we've been assigned to do something. Now, the real issue about all of the conflict and warfare and Rabbi Kurt said, Israel, the whole atmosphere is filled with conflict, chaos, 
And yet, Israel belongs to the Lord. So by us having Shabbat here tonight and praying for the peace of Jerusalem, some way he penetrates through that. See, don't think we're doing this for us because of the order of this service. We just took authority over the chaos over his covenant plan and covenant land. Now, this is what I've learned. Once you've taken that authority and gotten in the order of the first, then... We come and we pray for Israel, the people of Israel, and then the first people here. And we actually let them become Judah and let us forth first. Therefore, the order of tonight, you're in perfect order. The sounding of the shofars, heaven's instrument. Amazing. The real issue about all of the warfare around us right now is you just want to know what your real war is. Don't be jumping off into every war. And that's why you need to know your moment and you need to know the order of God. Now, because in this era of war, it's really more than just conflict. It's about the birthing of the next several years and how we enter in and operate in this era becomes very important. In 1986, God showed me in 10 year increments everything that would be happening through 2026. What I believe happens at this Passover is he gives us the ability to set the next two years order. Now, let me couple that. That says... From this house, they'll be able to unravel threefold cords. You're going to be requested to do that. And this era is about the voice, how you speak, the voice coming out of your house, the supernatural atmosphere you're walking in and contending for authority, how you're determining rule and how... And I love that scripture that Rochelle brought up, how you stay ahead, one step ahead of death so that you accomplish it. See, that's what David did. He said, well, wait a minute. I've been anointed. I don't understand it, but I have been anointed. Uh, I've watched the Lord give me favor with Saul, bring me up before him to play music first of all and get rid of the evil spirits on him to bring me before him with Goliath to give me Michael but you know he still wants to kill me and I remember that prophecy Samuel said that I'm going to rule all of Israel now how is this going to happen if I don't stay one step ahead of death If I don't keep moving toward that divine intersection and fulfillment of that prophecy. So see, that's actually what we do. We determine the rule we're going to have based upon how we keep moving and how we keep rehearsing as Samuel did, the word of the Lord. Now, it's not just about us individually because the nations are in a turmoil. The nations will always be in a turmoil 
when they're trying to take out God's covenant land. And God uses that to see which nations will align with it. So right now, America's hanging in the balance. That's really what the eclipse was about. Uh, I'm determining your path. I'm giving you a shot for the path, but you're going to have to know you're hanging in the balance the next two years, starting this Passover. Because see, this whole era is a pay era. Pesach, Passover is a pay word. And every Passover becomes important how we celebrate. And starting this Passover, God starts realigning all the nations. Lord, we want to be aligned right. Say it out loud. See, that's what that thing was where he aligned the moon and the sun. It was dramatic. It affected all of America. 15 different states because he's revealing this to us. And see, the other thing God revealed to me in all of what he began to do in my life was time. He's not in time. We're in time. And how we respond to his sovereign hand out of time is how we're going to be blessed and keep moving. And he has key plans to keep us in perfect timing. I think if I, when I counsel people or when I listen to people, I think their biggest problem is, well, what if I miss it? What if I don't see what the Lord's doing in my life? Listen, he wants you to see it more than you want to see it. But he's given us certain things to understand. Why is time so important? Who you connect with. Go ahead, John, and let's move forward. Who you connect with. Why is that so important? How will that help you secure your promise? See, when the Lord decided it was time to make his nation be known, he gathered them in war units. That's what uh, Exodus chapter 6 says. And he brought them out by tribes. And he had an order of how he brought them out and how they had to say, stay with his presence central among them if they were going to win the wars. And then I love when Paul talks about in Acts 17, he said, he's made one blood from every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth. Now, once you get a revelation of that, it's going to do away with all your prejudice because you're going to end up cursing you because we all come from the same pot. That's what the Lord said. I've, I've changed you. And I've made you and I've rearranged you. And some of you have different cultural expressions, but I made all of you from one blood. That's why one person could save you all. And then he said, and I pre-appointed your times and your boundaries of where you dwell so that you could seek me and grasp for me and find me. Do you know what that means? When you're at the right place at the right time tonight, you can just reach up and grab hold of it. Anything you ask for, he'll do. And then he said this, it shall come to pass from one new moon to another. Now hear this. One first fruit to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall worship before me. In other words, if you will get in an understanding of first fruits, because that will keep you in a harvest mentality, and then if you'll do Shabbat, 
I will show you my workings. He had Shabbat, he had first fruits, he had feast and that he required. And he said, if you'll do that from generation to generation and stay in the timing of it, you'll succeed. See, by us doing Shabbat tonight, there's an anointing of success coming on all of us to overcome our enemy. And then all through the word of God, he had two laws that were so important, a law of restoration and a law of redemption. And if we moved with him, we could live in restoration and redemption. And the key with the tabernacle of David, and I think the key with the house of David, it was central for the presence of God. See, that's what God showed me about Eastern Oklahoma. It would be so essential for the presence of God to be established in the east, and, and he showed me this out of the book of Ezekiel, then it would flood toward the west of Oklahoma, but not until it was established in the east. All of Oklahoma couldn't be saved. Look around and say, you know, we're doing his will tonight. And then he, I felt like he told me he was bringing us here because this year in this decade, this new era, the first decade of this new era, and that's a historical era. Everything is be, being rewritten right now in history. The heavens are changing. The earth is changing. God's not changing. But he says... He puts off the heavens like an old garment. Everything around us is changing, and this year in this new era is about commanding our new opening. Yes. Yes. Where is God going to open up your path in a new way? And he brought us here from eastern Oklahoma at House of David to say, ask me to open it up. Ask me to open up ways for you you've never asked me to open up before. There's an anointing here tonight for this. And then this era, one of the pay words linked with this era is we are coming into a Holy Spirit movement. Amen. The wine skin is changing for this kingdom explosive movement. And it's as if the Lord will choose those who will lead that movement. See, a better word for Holy Spirit, the advocate, is proc. It's a pay word. Pay resh kaf lamed alif. The one who ends the curse that started in your house. And see, one of the things I've always seen about the house of David in Oklahoma is when you planted it, curses started breaking. You could go back to the time frame. We watched the curses on the land start breaking. All you'd have to do is just look at your history. That's why when you took me over there, you, by, plant, by God choosing you to plant here, the breaking of the curses in this land started accelerating because it brought a new order to the concentration camp of the first people of America. 
And the Lord said, I'll break the power of that camp. I'll cause them to take land. I'll cause them to move forward. I'll cause them to have great authority. But he had to bring this here for that to begin. Now, here's what I want to sort of leave with you. The new is now. It's not something that's coming. We're in it. You're just going to have to watch for your moments of it. And that's what tonight's about. And if you watch for your moments that God ordains, he'll heal you. He'll give you strategies to overcome the enemy. He'll break spirits of poverty off of you. He'll give you authority to tell your bloodline you're going to be cleansed. See, once Holy Spirit starts moving in you, you can command... His spirit is flowing through your blood and you can command your whole bloodline back four generations to come into a new order. One of the things that changed my life was that The Lord caught me up after we started doing Shabbat and did two things. First of all, he opened the heavens and he showed me all of the blessings my great-grandfather didn't take, my grandfather didn't take, and my dad didn't take. And the Lord said, you can have them all. Because I had those planned for your blood. And then all I had to do was hear him. Tell me what to do. Another thing he did was we were, had gone to prayer meeting on a Wednesday night and we were coming back and the Lord met us and he said, I want you to go see your grandparents. I'm ready to reconcile and restore. I hadn't seen them in years. Because the day my dad died, they chose never to see us again. He said, I want you to go see them. And I want you to, when you get there, ask them to forgive all that's gone on in this family. Well, I didn't didn't understand any of that. But I told Pam, she said, okay, we'll drive there. We drove five hours. We got there. I got out. They didn't know who I was, but they had recognized my wife's picture. And they knew who she was. And I did just what the Lord asked me to do. I asked them to forgive. I said, we have gone through so much. Let's just ask the Spirit of God to forgive all this and move forward again. They both started weeping. They were in church the next week. They both got baptized. Now, now here's what else you get when you step in here. We're living in the one new man era of maturation. In other words, I believe what God did in, at Passover 2020 was say, I'm going to pull you all behind the door. I'm going to start over and I'm going to bring you out and I will start bringing forth one new man in an accelerated way. 
This place is going to lead a nation in doing that. The Lord says, Lord says to you, you don't have to worry about how you're going to do it. They're going to find you. Because some of us are going to pray you be sought after, you be found, and it will surprise you. You'll have the right word at the right time. You'll represent one new man when you stand together, and you'll say the last 70 years of America now will shift. And see, when we have a meeting like this on Shabbat, all of a sudden, He's bringing the remnant together. He's reordering us. And he's saying, the minute you step out of here, you're in my presence. Expect signs and wonders to follow you. (laughs) Expect things to happen. And whatever evil See, this is what God showed me about Shabbat because we had so much evil. Pam said, you know, you could go all over the world. I've been to over 160 nations. You could go all all over the world teaching about demons because your family had them all. (laughs) But God showed me if I'm at the right place at the right time, whatever evil has devised, it can't Manifest. That's why we do Shabbat. We pull aside, we rest, we look back at all we've been through over the last six days. Then we stop. It's like stopping at a stop sign. And then if you stop and you reflect, you can begin to see your future. By being here, you see the future. It's what makes us capable of living in a prophetic anointing. It and first fruits. Now, I'm here to leave several things for you. Out of this place in the east of Oklahoma, where the glory is going to move, and become a procession. There's going to be a new prophetic anointing come. Every time you walk in, the Spirit of God is going to stir up that prophetic anointing. And it's going to be, you're going to know the timing of how to go because this place is in time. And you won't have to worry about vision because it will produce your vision. Now there's something else. There's this new intercessory watchman anointing. By us being here tonight, we receive. I think Nigel, all of Oklahoma is gonna receive a new mantle because we're in God's time before Passover in this Shabbat. And we're going to be able to represent Holy Spirit in a new way. So, how you speak, what you see, where you walk, becomes the keys to your year ahead from tonight. Because we're in the right place at the right time. Now, I know God sent me. I don't know whether he sent me for y'all or for me. I just know he sent me. And I knew if I ever had to be somewhere, I had to be here tonight. And if I would be here, God would work in me. I've gone through quite a bit the last season. 
And then yesterday, I had a terrible, terrible attack. Now, when you've walked in the spiritual realm as long as I, you know the difference between when you've done something wrong and you're going through a hard, awful time. And when the enemy is trying to stop you. And starting Wednesday night, it was a hellish war over being here tonight. I think part of that war was linked with Israel and all that's going on there. When you know covenant, part of covenant is when if you're in covenant like Ray and I are in covenant, if he goes to war, I go to war with him. But I really had a very difficult time. And what I almost died with in 2001 came back against me. But this is what I told Pam. I said, what I learned from that And I had to war it for months to live through it. And you know what God did during that? We were at a big national, international school of prophets. And Cindy Jacobs came to me and said, this thing you're going through is some way still linked with your dad. And I said, my gosh, I wrote a whole book on that. Why won't this thing ever get to the end? And then I was getting ready to go in the hospital the next day. And Keith called and said, this sickness you're going through, the Lord told me while I was teaching Sunday school, it's it's linked with our dad. And I said, well, why don't you get sick? (laughs) And he said, well, I'll tell you why. You knew what he should have accomplished. And you knew the loss. I never saw anything good because by the time we were at that place, things were already bad in Keith's life. And he said, but you knew what should have been and so the loss that is in you is linked to this sickness and to him some way. And so I just, after listening to both of them, I got before the Lord the next morning and I said, Lord, show me what I'm missing. They have both said, this is linked with my dad. And all of a sudden, in a moment, God showed it to me. It was like a a movie reel came down before me and I was at my aunt. I had come back from church with my aunt to her house and my dad pulled up to get me and she said, you know, I haven't seen you in church in two or three years, worshiping. He said, well, some need to worship, others of us need to work and make money. And the Lord said, do not forget the Sabbath. Every time you forget the Sabbath, there will be a consequence. So when you've established a place like this, it's part of the glory realm of the whole territory. And I saw in all of my ministry and going, some way I'd forgotten Doesn't mean we won't go through things. But the thing about going through things when you're in him is you're capable of allowing him to rise up through you to confront those things. And so when this thing started coming against me, any normal person would have stopped and said, I can't go any further. I had a severe, severe attack Wednesday night and yesterday. 
And I said, I will get to House of David in eastern Oklahoma. Satan, I will get there by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to take Shabbat there. And when I get there, you're going to be defeated. And you can ask the guys that came with me, my son and these other two wonderful servants that came with me last night. They, they said, there, there's no way we can keep going. I said, I'll get there. Now, this is what I'm going to ask Rabbi Kurt to do for all of us. We blew the shofar four times. I'm going to ask him to come up here with me. We blew the shofar four times. And seven is linked with completion. Four sets the boundaries for your future. Seven is linked with completion. And the shofar, once you understand that sound, it's going all the way into your inward parts. When you're in Shabbat and you hear it, it's going down in you. It's doing things you don't even understand. I'm going to ask Rabbi to take this shofar. I'm going to ask all of you with shofars just to stand up wherever you are. He's going to lead us in two more incredible blasts and shout of this shofar. And then I'm going to have him do something for all of us on the third one that will complete our assignment here. How many we're going to do? You're going to do two right now. Two right now? Okay. You guys ready? Girls? That's five. Can you feel it? You just feel it. You're six. Something is happening at this Shabbat. In eastern Oklahoma, let's all stand up now. For every one of us. And when Rabbi blows this seventh time, I'm going to ask him to do something that the Lord told me to have him do. I want you to blow that right here toward me. Okay. And it's going to go in and you're part of this, what it's going to do is going to break words that go down into your inward part that would stop you from prospering in days ahead. You're going to receive the anointing for blowing and leading us. I'm going to receive the anointing for healing and you're going to receive a wholeness that will allow you to complete this Shabbat knowing you are in the moment and that your next step you take, you are ahead of your enemy. Let's give a shout right now. Yes! Now, point your hands. Christy, run up here with Rabbi. Point your hands at Rabbi and Christy.
I decree beginning today, you'll be able to break words that have been spoken when people come to you, when you hear certain things being said, you'll have an authority just to break them in half and loose God's restoration and redemptive plan. And the Lord says, also, you're going to have the authority to untangle threefold cords and you're going to be called up and sought after. Get ready. Things are changing. And I will supply everything you need to accomplish this in days ahead. In Yeshua's name. Let's thank God for what he's doing. In Yeshua's name. Now, I, I love how our first people always give us things. A lot of bling for me. Yes. I love it. They know me. Thank you. But the Lord told me to bring a double portion blessing tonight to you. Now, Lord, I bless this house. I bless this day. I bless this sound. And I decree over all of us, we are one step ahead of our enemy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give Apostle Chuck. Thank you. Come on, give him a great big shout. <clears throat> Let's and just extend your hands to him as he goes out healed. Healed of the Lord in House of David. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I have the honor at this time for all of you online and in the house. We're going to receive tonight's tithes and offerings. And also, if you would like to be able to give a special gift to Gloria Zion Ministries, you can do that through us tonight. Just you can mark it in the... uh, memo there, and we already have given a generous gift. We are a generous house that understands the power of the moment to sow seed. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Hey, Dwayne, these ladies over there, okay, they got that. Did you enjoy tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The timing of the Lord before Passover is absolutely amazing. Next Sunday, we'll be here in the immersion pool. And the immersion is for those who are registered for the Passover in-house. And then Monday will be here for Passover. If you would like to join us live here at House of David for the full traditional sit-down meal, we do have a few spaces available. If you're in-house, I w- you can register in-house. I've got Pastor Garland, you're here. Would you please register him as my guest next Monday? Can you come to Passover? Put your feet under this table. Okay. Well, if you can, if uh, you would go in the back, and I don't, I don't want, I want to sow that to him, and Christy and I will pay for you and a guest to come to this Passover. You know, we started prophesying about doors of destiny in this Passover. Uh, It's um, everything Apostle Chuck said, I totally receive it and it's bringing confirmation. But I also started speaking a warning, quite a, I don't know, I don't remember. I'm not like Apostle Chuck where he has everything, the prophetic words. 
but I did. I've been speaking to you about the enemy's going to do everything he can to not have you put your feet under his table. So he's not telling you the whole story. He was very ill. We have a lot of things in common, he and I. And one of the things, and Pastor Tim would tell you this, I've never let infirmity stop me from going to an assignment in over 30 years. And I've been very ill before. And as soon as I got to the pulpit and the bema and started to speak, it would break. And that's what happened with him. But there's not a lot of people who would push through like this. One of the reasons he pushed through, one of the reasons I have pushed through is because it has nothing to do with me. It has to do when God gives you authority, that authority doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the kingdom. And there's always tests that come. And um, so I'm so blessed that, that he came. And I'm so blessed that he's here. I remember when he prophesied that it would come, the glory would come out of Oklahoma in the Eastern Gate. And Pastor Tim and I and Christy, we all knew it was going to be here. But I will say this humbly why I think it happens here is because one of the biggest battles that we have had as a ministry has been, why do you meet on Friday nights? I mean, you know where we live and you understand all the challenges for families to be here on Friday night. But after over 20 years in this house, I understand the principle of putting him first. The very first scripture I ever saw when I got, after I got saved, I went to Grace Church with Pastor Steve Gutzler and Julie Gutzler. And I'm so blessed that they're now part of the uh, executive life coaching for House of David. When you're walking in covenant, you have long-term relationships. Like I have with Nigel. Nigel and I have been known each other since 96. And Ray, we've shortly after. And this is a covenant house. And the key is, and I'm just speaking to leaders here. I'm not saying you need to change when you have your meetings in your church. I'm talking about having a covenant heart attitude with God. Covenant is about relationship. Covenant is about honor, and honor is the currency of heaven. We had no choice at House of David to be anything other than what we are. I wasn't raised in an Orthodox Jewish home. I'm not a religious person. And when the Osballs and Landry came together at the farm, we just started meeting on Shabbat. I'd like to say like some giant revelation came. It, it didn't, it just, things evolved. Then when I started as a businessman, realizing the connection between financial liberty and freedom, because that's what wealth is. The liberty and freedom of finance is tied to keeping God's calendar. And once that mystery unfolded for me, um, I said, we have to do this. And you would say, oh, you just want to be, you want to have money. That's, that's not my heart. My heart is, is that when I get a call from Israel like we did earlier this week, and they say the war is coming, and the ones that call me know, okay, that's not random civilians. And they said, our biggest challenge will be is that they're going after the power grid. Can you provide generators? And we said, how many do you need? And they said, to start, we need 14. It's a lot of money. We're talking in the 60,000 range. And we immediately wired the money.
Now, it accomplishes two things. Number one, when the war does come, you cannot supply medical help without electricity. But what it did is when our representative to be able to go to the IDF medical corps that we work with and not have to wait two weeks for the answer, but in a few hours, they said yes. That's covenant. So what you heard about what Apostle Chuck said with Ray, when Ray goes to war, he goes to war. In this house, when Israel goes to war, we go to war. And yeah, come on, give the Lord a hand clap. So the reason this Passover is so, um, I think, important, it's not even just the Passover itself. In my heart, it's the preparation of everything we've done and will do this week to get ready for it. But you need to know that you're in a war to get to that table. The key is to get past the valley of the shadow of death and get to where your cup runs over. And that's what's going to happen on the 22nd. And the reason I want you here on, this, on Sunday to go into the immersion is what I'm going to ask P- Patty and your team, we're having a meeting now because no one knows this. <laughs> so I'll just tell you now. Is I want the, the, the prophetic ministry team and the prayer team to be in the immersion room. And, and what I want you to do this time when you go in the water, this is different, but the Lord showed it to me here just the other day and I hadn't had a chance to call and tell you. Or Megan, sorry. <laughs> There's, the key is, is to follow the Lord. So what I want you to do is when you come in and uh, to the immersion on Sunday, I want you to go and just have one person pray for you, one team, couple, whoever. And they're going to speak a word to you and pray. And the Lord's going to reveal. And whatever that revelation is, would you please just take it into the water by yourself and go in and say, Father God, I understand the immersion is the circumcision of the heart for the Gentiles. That's what it says in Colossians. So whatever I have in my heart, and you heard what Apostle said, that it had to be an issue between his father that was causing the infirmity. The water has the ability to cut the soul tie. That's the mind, will, and emotion with that wound. I've never seen anything like it, particularly on the feast. So let him pray for you. Confess your faults one to another. It's in confidence. And let the Lord... when purposely with intent go into the water and say, if you have to go down 10 times, but just between you, we don't need the prayer people in the water. I want you on the sides, but you need to go in and determine to leave that soul tie in the water so that when you all come in this glorious room and we celebrate all the symbolism in the four cups, that you actually leave Egypt on the 22nd. This is the time. This is a now word that he's bringing. Because you understand we need to be standing strong. Your finances don't need to dip down because of what's going to happen economically because of what's getting ready to happen in the Middle East. I mean, you understand how fragile this is. And we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem But the key with shalom doesn't mean free from conflict. It means that it's divine purpose. And what's happening is the Lord is lifting up Zion. The time to favor Zion is now. And the Lord's lifting up Zion and is supernaturally going to protect Zion. And I agree. I agree with the words of Yoav Gallant, who is the minister of defense, who Christy and I have prayed for and I prophesied over. And one of the things that he said, and I agree with this, so I bring it into the courts. He said, 
whoever fires on us from wherever they fire on us, we will fire back more intently. And I agree with that in Yeshua's name. Because Israel does not need permission from another nation to defend itself. You understand? Come on, give the Lord it. So, all of this is in the Lord's hands. And it's most likely, and I'm not prophesying this, but in my spirit, it's the, the real disruption is going to be before Passover. So keep focused, get your seed in the ground, and prepare for a shift. Because what happens to Israel, what happens to us. So the real enemies are going to be stirred up. How many know that Satan would have never crucified Jesus if he knew what was going to happen to him? And that's how these demons are. They get greedy, get wound up, and they, they lose, so to say, common sense. But you can see that if, if, if a, an attack, a rocket, comes from one area, I can't say the areas. We want to stay on the air. Isn't that sad? See, we've, we don't have freedom of speech. Don't kid yourself. So depending on where the spirits are and what the Lord allows, just know this, that what Israel is saying, they're not bluffing. There's no bluff in it. It, it, it's going to happen, I promise you. And my prayer has been this, Father God in Yeshua's name, you know what needs to be removed to bring seven years of peace. We need to be prepared. That's why this Passover is so critical. We need to be in the war spiritually, physically, and our seed needs to be in the ground. Amen. Amen. And we're doing that. So you're properly aligned. But tonight, what I would like to do, if it's okay, can we go out and worship? If we could have, let's welcome the worship team back up. And uh, and while they're worshiping, if you would bring your, your seat down. If you're online, if you'd like to be able to give, you can go to Kurt Lander, are we st still online? Yes, praise God, good. So if you'd put my PowerPoint up so you can show them where they can give, you can go to kurtlandry.com forward slash donate. There it is, forward slash donate. If you'd like to sow your seed tonight, if you'd like to bless Gloria Zion, you can just put that in the memo. We've already blessed him, and if you would like to help us, then that's great. Isn't it interesting that he sowed a seed into Christy and I? That is the same culture that we have. We sowed a seed into Impact Center. If you can, anytime something good, and you have a, what, this is tonight, he's calling it a moment, I call it a moed, Anytime you have a moed, you always want to have a seed and a moed together because what happens is the seed is the activator to cause it to, go to, to come to pass. Did you like your little shofar? It's very nice. Hallelujah. If you would stand with me. In-house, why don't you just, if you'd leave it so they can enjoy the worship if you're still with us online. Please, if you're online, if you're sharing, uh, please share, follow, subscribe. I have a, a request for you because if you stayed this long, if you would please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We, praise God, we're over 80,000 subscribers now. So let's give them a hand clap. Thank you so much. And uh, we would like to get to 100. If we get to 100,000, then our relationship with YouTube changes at another level. But YouTube actually really likes us, and some of the others are learning to like us. But YouTube does like us, and, and uh, if you'll subscribe on that channel and become a member, I think it's only $2.50 to join. 
a month, 250, and you think, well, how difference does that make? That's how when the phone rings and we can say <laughs> 14 generators, all of that helps. You're the backbone, all Kurt Landry ministry partners, CLM partners, House of David. You're the backbone. And we thank you for that in Yeshua's name. Father God, I just thank you and bless all the seed that's being sown. Thank you, it's being blessed in a hundredfold. A hundredfold. It's time. Say, it's time, Lord. When you get ready to bring your seed down, what I want you to do tonight, make a demand, put a demand on it. What do you need financially? What do you need? Some of you are asking too small and that's why it's not coming. Ask the Lord, Lord, give me a figure to believe. Say, I plant this seed and I'm asking for what your need is. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Victory, joy in the war, peace in the war, rest in the war.